Everybody, welcome to this presentation on uh, the Jenkins uh, external fingerprint storage project. Um, this was one of the Jenkins research projects this year. Uh, I had some amazing mentors, so Oleg, Andre, and Mike helped me along all the uh, all the way along. Um, so uh, for today's presentation, I'll be starting off with a small personal introduction. Um, then I'll be uh, talking about what exactly is the Jenkins uh, fingerprinting engine. What are fingerprints? Uh, then I'll talk about the external fingerprint storage API that we developed during the course of this project. Um, and then I'll talk about some of the plugins that are uh, ready for the community to use um, and, and, some, and some information about them. Uh, following that, I'll be showcasing a demo which will um, show the usage for uh, how to use these plugins. Uh, and following that, we'll have a small Q&A. So I'll start off with a personal introduction. I'm Sumit. Uh, I was the juicer uh, student for this project. Um, I'm currently pursuing a bachelor's in engineering. Uh, I started contributing to Jenkins in December 2019, and I uh, made some contributions around the Jenkins fingerprint engine, uh, which ultimately led me to being interested and taking part, uh, you know, in this wonderful project. So uh, I'll start uh, with the Jenkins uh, fingerprinting engine and uh, what exactly fingerprints are. So uh, fingerprints inside Jenkins, uh, they are nothing but a way to track the usage of artifacts or files across the entire Jenkins, uh, uh, you know, different jobs and builds um, across the entire CICD flow. And that makes dependency tracking easy. So to, you know, uh, to take a small example here, um, say team A builds uh, an artifact, you know, A, a dot jar and team B is building, you know, B dot jar and uh, B dot jar consumes A dot jar and uh, team B finds, you know, there is some issue in uh, A dot jar and they report it to team A. Now team A needs to find out exactly which version of A dot jar uh, is team B using. So um, so this is one of the use case for fingerprints and they can easily, uh, using the Fink Jenkins fingerprinting engine, uh, they can find out that uh, team B is using which uh, version of it or jar so they can, you know, uh, fix the bug. So I'll show a live example of uh, this uh, usage inside Jenkins. So here I have a Jenkins instance configured uh, with two jobs, a job A and job B, uh, just like I talked about uh, in the example. So if I configure a build for job A, uh, I can go and see that the build that was created, I can see its fingerprints. So I can see that uh, it has finger recorded the fingerprint for one file, which is a.jar. Um, and I can see its usages across Jenkins. So I can see that it's only been used in build date of job A. Now, if I go back and I start a build for job B, which actually consumes a.jar, and then I go to see which fingerprints were recorded, I can see that it's recording the fingerprint for eight or jar whose original owner was just job A's build date. Um, I can see the usage history for this, uh, and I can see that you know this particular artifact was con uh, it's used in job A's build date and job B's build date. So that's how uh, across uh, that's how the fingerprinting engine in Jenkins is allowing me to uh, you know view this um, uh, usage of eight or jar across the entire CI/CD flow. So uh, that was uh, a small live example for the Jenkins fingerprinting engine. And uh, I've discussed the, you know, I've shown the fingerprints UI, this UI inside Jenkins. So now I'll be talking about uh, what, what was the motivation uh, behind what we did in this project. So currently, uh, so before this project was created, um, it was, you know, uh, we took this over. Um, the Jenkins uh, fingerprinting metadata was stored inside the local disk storage of Jenkins home. So it was stored as XML files and uh, it has its, it had its you know, own set of disadvantages that as the number of fingerprints increase, uh, the disk storage of Jenkins also you know, takes more space. And uh, you, know, you cannot configure uh, pay as you use cloud storages that are you know, uh, much cheaper these days. Um, also, you cannot, you know, configure say replica sets to, you know, provide uh, better reliability, availability, uh, backup management is harder. And uh, last of all, um, each Jenkins instance is storing the fingerprint metadata for only the uh, for its own fingerprints. So, um, so say if you have multiple Jenkins instances and you want to track this uh, usage across Jenkins instances, there's not a common store for all these fingerprints. So, with these concerns in mind. Uh, we built the external fingerprint storage API in Jenkins code. Uh, so 
uh, the idea behind this architecture of pluggable storage uh, is that uh, Jenkins Core provides this external fingerprint storage API to plugin developers, and uh, plugin developers can then uh, you know build storage specific plugins. So say they can be a Redis fingerprint storage plugin or any uh, uh, you know say a Postgres fingerprint storage plugin. And um, the users can just install this plugin. They can configure their own instance, uh, and um, just uh, you know, after that, all these fingerprints start getting stored inside the external storage. Uh, so that was the idea behind this API, and also uh, you know that uh, a single uh, such uh, storage instance can act as a store for multiple Jenkins instance fingerprints. Uh, this idea of externalizing a component for uh, inside Jenkins, you know, it's a wide initiative inside Jenkins to make Jenkins cloud native. Um, so there are other stories also, for example, externalizing the storage of configuration files, uh, blogs, etc. And, you know, I can view these all on the cloud native uh, page, uh, the cloud native SIG page. So I'll be briefly touching upon the external fingerprint storage API. Um, so if you are, uh, if you would like to know the, the various design decisions we took, uh, so there's a Jenkins enhancement proposal, the JEP226, which highlights those in detail. Um, we create introduced this API in Jenkins Core 2.242, and uh, since then we have been consist continuously uh, upgrading it, improving it, and uh, even Jen so up till Jenkins 2.253, something related to fingerprints has been going out. Uh, so apart from the basic um, methods that this uh, API offers, you know, like loading, saving, deleting these fingerprints, there are some other features also that it offers. Um, to, so those I'll be discussing in the following slides. But if you are, um, if you would like to, you know, uh, get to know more about the methods that this API offers, uh, feel free to refer to the Java doc that con that contains uh, some more information on this. So. Uh, as I said, one of the features that we also implemented that, that this API offers is uh, fingerprint cleanup. So uh, we introduced this facility in Jenkins Core 2.248. So basically what happens is that uh, as, uh, as you know, these builds inside Jenkins get deleted, uh, this fingerprint metadata might get obsolete and these fingerprints need to be cleaned up or they'll keep consuming extra space. So that's uh, the cleanup facility, and uh, there's a job that runs in Jenkins uh, daily to clean up these fingerprints. So we extended the this functionality to um, Jenkins uh, external fingerprint storage API, so that external storage plugins can uh, perform and configure their own fingerprint cleanup strategies. So we offer these some methods in the API for plugin developers, which they can use um, to you know. Uh, allow users to configure cleanup and, and they can implement it in the most efficient way possible because the API is generic enough. So for example, the Redis fingerprint storage plugin are, uh, uses cursors to uh, traverse all the fingerprints and uh, clean those up. Um, so that's how the Redis plugin does it. Um, also, um, you know, we understand that it might be the case that this performance overhead just does not make sense if the storage is very cheap. So uh, in the fingerprint section inside, uh, when you configure this, uh, configure fingerprints, uh, you can uh, go ahead and disable fingerprint cleanup. So users can do that if they, are, uh, if they feel that it's just not worth the extra performance uh, overhead. So that is also, that's something we left up to the users. Uh, another uh, feature that this API offers is uh, fingerprint migration. So we introduced fingerprint migration in Jenkins uh, 2.251. Um, so, what fingerprint migration does is that uh, for those users who already have uh, fingerprints on their local storage, uh, Jenkins Core automatically takes uh, the task of uh, transferring these fingerprints to the newly configured external fingerprint storage. Um, but we do not do that uh, in one go. So as uh, so, you know, there might be large number of fingerprints, and it does not make sense to you know. Uh, uh, from a performance standpoint uh, to do this in one go. So we implement a lazy migration strategy. So as and when these fingerprints get used, uh, they get migrated to the new configured uh, external storage. So this allows gradual migration of old fingerprints from local storage to the new external storage. Oh, okay, so uh, lastly, um, I'll be talking about some of the external fingerprint storage plugins that are available for the community to use. Um, the first one that we developed during the course of this project was the Redis fingerprint storage plugin. Um, so uh, it's currently uh, 
the latest release for it is 1.0 RC3, uh, and uh, it can be installed directly via the update center. Um, so all the instructions for how to use it, uh, we've, uh, so th these are all available, and you can even use Jcask to configure it. Um, also, the GitHub page is also linked. Um, so uh, we appreciate everybody, you know, uh, giving it a try and letting us know their valuable feedback on this plugin. Um, it supports both migration and cleanup. Uh, so, so, um, so that's about the Redis plugin. So after building the Redis plugin, um, what we realized is that uh, Redis, uh, so these fingerprints were getting stored in Redis as blobs. So all this fingerprint metadata was not queryable. Um, so with that in mind, and you know, to uh, define a relational structure to this data and uh, allow powerful querying strategies, uh, we um, and also because Redis was an in-memory database, we decided to build the Postgres fingerprint storage plugin. Um, so the latest release for that is the 0.1 alpha one. Uh, it's at the moment it supports migration but not cleanup. Um, uh, it allows uh, powerful querying of this fingerprint metadata and especially uh, there's something called as a fingerprint facet that exists uh, inside fingerprints. So plugins can add some extra information inside fingerprints using facets. So uh, that is also queryable. Uh, so for example, the Docker traceability plugin uh, tracks the usage of Docker images and you can actually trace these uh, across uh, multiple Jenkins instances via the Postgres uh, plugin. Uh, at the moment, uh, you have to have knowledge of the uh, database to actually, you know, write these queries. But this has actually opened up a huge potential for other plugins to uh, consume uh, this uh, facility and offer this right out of the box to the users. So we also appreciate uh, everybody trying it out. At the moment, you can only install it via the experimental update center because this only been an alpha release. Uh, but you know, uh, give it a shot. Let us know. Uh, finally, I'll be moving on to the demo. Uh, so, all right, I have my Jenkins instance here. So what I'll be doing is, um, uh, I'll create a new job. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll create a new job and I'll add a build step. Uh, so it's a very simple job. Uh, so what it does is that I let go hello world and, um, create an artifact that would be say demo.jar um, and I'll add a post build ac action that is to record fingerprints. So this way I can record the fingerprint of demo.jar. I'll hit apply and I'll hit save. Uh, at this moment in this Jenkins instance, I have a fingerprint uh, storage plugins installed, but I don't have them configured. So what I'll do is I'll uh, hit a build for the Redis demo first. Um, and I'll see what fingerprints got created. So it's recording the usage of demo.jar in build one. But uh, so, okay, so you can see this editor also, right? Just to make sure. Uh, yes. Awesome. awesome. Uh, so if you see that it's actually storing this particular fingerprint as an XML file inside Jenkins, uh, right? So, so what I'll do is I actually have a server, uh, a Redis server here. And at the moment, it has it's empty, right? So now what I'll do is uh, I'll show how to configure the Redis fingerprint storage plugin. So I'll go to manage Jenkins. Uh, I don't want to. I don't have to install the plugin because I already have it installed. I'll just go to configure system and go scroll down to the fingerprint section. So as I discussed, that here is the uh, here's the checkbox which allows you know enabling and disabling the fingerprint cleanup. Uh, and here's the fingerprint storage engine uh, drop down. So I'll be choosing the Redis fingerprint storage. Uh, here I can configure host, port, SSL, database, connection timeout, software timeout, and credentials if any. Um, once I have that all in place, I can just hit the test Redis connection and it gives me a success. That means uh, it's able to connect uh, uh, to my Redis instance and I'll just uh, hit apply and I'll hit save. And now, uh, the Redis uh, fingerprint storage should store the fingerprints. So what I'll do is um, I'll hit uh, the build. I'll hit on the build for this job, and uh, let's see what fingerprint it, uh, it created. So demo jars usage has been recorded in builds one and build two. Now, if we go here, you can actually see this fingerprint got automatically de deleted from the local storage. 
uh, I have another fingerprint, but this is not the reddest one. It's the one I showed at the live example. Um, but if I go and hit uh, my Redis instance, uh, I can see that uh, this fingerprint is now getting stays saved inside my Redis instance. So this is the Redis demo uh, fingerprint that got stored as a blob inside Redis. Um, so this was what uh, I was talking about. When, uh, so this is what I meant when I was talking about fingerprint migration. It automatically migrated this fingerprint from the local storage to the external storage. Um, lastly, uh, I'll also show um, how to use, you know, the Postgres plugin. So I can go again to con configure system. Um, and in the fingerprint section, I can choose Postgres this time. And uh, I can configure the details. So I have a database named demo already. Um, and I can add uh, credentials for it. So just a disclaimer that if we have, you have to create a database on your own. Uh, the users have to create it on, on their own. and uh, rest the plugin um, can after that use it. So if I hit test uh, the connection, I get a success, but I also need to hit perform Postgres schema initialization so that the schema gets created inside my database. Uh, I got a success. So now what I can do is I can hit apply and I can hit save. So now, uh, so also another side note that ideally we should not be, you know, configuring multiple storages at the same time. So, I mean, um, you know, just configure one external storage and then use it. Uh, but for the demo, I'm I'm actually changing it to the Postgres one, and uh, I'll hit the build for it. Um, and let's see that the fingerprint was recorded uh, properly. Yes. And if I go to my, um, you know, uh, Postgres uh, uh, interface, I can see that inside uh, the demo database, there is a fingerprint schema uh, that has a table for fingerprints. And I can see that it's recorded the fingerprint, which I asked it to. And it's storing all this information, like which instance created this fingerprint, what's the file name, uh, which job originally created this fingerprint. And if I go to the table uh, job build relation, it actually stores which uh, jobs and builds used this fingerprint. And the facet relation table stores uh, the facet usage. Uh, there is a phase three post that I've also linked in the presentation. Uh, it highlights some of the common queries that you can use to query this database. Um, and essentially, um, you know, uh, facets, jobs, builds, and anything can be queried. And if you have multiple Jenkins instances, con instances configured, uh, then you get all this information across Jenkins instances. So that's a great, uh, you know, use case. If uh, and maybe this should in the future, uh, plugins can use it and um, you know, write offer it right out of the box to users. Uh, finally. Uh, next steps. So contributions are always welcome. Uh, we, we hope that more plugin developers will come in. Uh, they'll implement this, uh, more, more different, uh, these plugins for more different storages. Um, cleanup is currently not offered by Postgres. Once we implement that, we can go ahead with the RC release for it. And, uh, we discuss some optimizations that can be made to the API. Um, so, you know, there, there's some work we could do there. Um, otherwise we appreciate, you know, uh, everybody to try these plugins out, uh, feedback is always uh, valuable to us. And if you have certain use cases, uh, that we could help you out with, we'd be happy to, um, you know, look into them. Uh, before I move into QA, there's some links also, I'll share the, um, this, um, slide deck on the project page also. And also before I move into Q&A, I would like to, you know, um, thank uh, my mentors, Oleg and Mike. Uh, I think it was a, um, they, they um, put in a lot of effort um, with, you know, helping me out. Uh, we had long design discussions. Uh, ultimately, I think uh, that made me a better programmer also. And um, it was a great summer. And, uh, and definitely the org admins for Jenkins uh, done a great job. Um, in, uh, you know, this entire program, really thankful to them. Uh, and I look forward to, you know, contributing more and, uh, for the years to come. So thank you. And, uh, I'll open the, uh, for any Q and A. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, we are going slightly over time. We have another presentation and we have 20 minutes left. Uh, but yeah, let's firstly answer question, uh, from, uh, Ulya. 
Are there plans to pull the external storage API up to the Jenkins core? So not every plugin uh, that wants to use an external storage needs to create individual plugins to Fortress, Reddit, Redis, etc. So I guess the question is about external storage, not the, about external fingerprint storage. Will you please correct me if I'm wrong? I need to grant voice permissions to order. Okay. So uh, submit. Sorry, what do you think? On, uh, yes, it's uh, in general, so not only yeah. for fingerprints. It would make sense to have it in general. So if I want to use it in the warnings plugin, I currently need to write an own plugin for Postgres and so on, which seems a little bit too much plugins. Uh, so would you repeat the question? I, can, I can't actually find the question, sorry. Uh, yeah. So Uli was asking whether there is a plan to have a generic external storage API. So not just for fingerprints, but basically for any type. Um, I think as far as my understanding goes, uh, there is a database plugin inside Jenkins, uh, which you can use for uh, configuring uh, databases from one place. But uh, I think uh, even uh, when uh, Jcask also uh, and uh, you know other, I think for external the Amazon S3 artifact manager. Um, so all these uh, plugins and all these chips are uh, looking into externalizing different components of Jenkins, and and each of them has a very uh, different design that needs to go into it. So so I think uh, this is happening at the moment in the cloud native sake on a more like a per feature basis. But um, but yeah, I mean if we can actually make it generic, that would also be amazing. Yeah. Also, if you take a look at the pluggable storage page in Cloud Native Seek, you can discover that uh, there is there are stories for generic uh, built results uh, storages. So basically, for run metadata, including call actions like warnings in G plugin reports. So there is interest to have um, such a generic layer, and uh, the work uh, done by Sumit basically opens a way for us. I would say to use Redis because uh, the same implementation could be used uh, to serialize data, to extract the data, um, and uh, we could uh, start uh, building that soon. So it really depends on the contributions, but architecturally wise, we have enough information, and the fingerprint storage is additional source of information for us so that uh, we could do it right. Is there any comments from the mentors of this project? Okay, uh, so Mike is uh, currently not able to speak. He uh, said that uh, yeah, uh, Sumit did a great job and the demo went really good. So thanks to Sumit. Uh, and now comments from me. Uh, yeah, uh, it was a really great project and Sumit uh, did a lot of things which we had originally didn't plan. So we were way ahead the schedule. Uh, I would say that the key functionality was delivered during the first coding phase. We had reference implementation, uh, which was fully operational by the middle of the second coding phase. And uh, yeah, it's not an easy project. Uh, fingerprints are uh, you know, part of the Jenkins core, so it means that uh, there are uh, much stricter delivery cycles. Also, Jenkins enhancement proposal uh, is a part specific to the Jenkins uh, core and evolution. And I would say that uh, Sumit did a really good job uh, uh, while preparing the plan, documenting the plan, uh, preparing formal specification for Jenkins enhancement proposal and also communicating with Jenkins core maintainers team and with other plugin maintainers. Uh, so yeah, there were, there were a lot of people involved and also uh, these implementations are quite uh, complicated on the technical side, uh, but still uh, plugins have, for example, integration testing, which involve tools like test containers. Uh, so uh, for me, it's a completed project with a lot of value delivered to the Jenkins community. And as I said before, it also builds foundation for future pluggable storage development in the project. And yeah, 
person, I think that this project is a total success. And hopefully we will be able uh, to finalize uh, it to finally accept the JEP and to make API public by the next LCS baseline. I mean, if everything is in place, so it's just a matter of the Jenkins uh, developer mailing list discussion. So thanks a lot, Sumit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.